Twitch's new gambling rules have been in effect for over a week now, and the result is terrible. Sure, some of the biggest streamers on the platform aren't playing crypto slots now, but the slots category on Twitch is now filled with view botters, outright scams, and streams whose only job is to get you to go to another streaming site to watch the same old gambling. And if a viewer does follow their streamer to one of these other sites, there's a chance they could see some pretty messed up stuff. Twitch's inaction now looks all the worse as new challengers are trying to cut in on their action. So today, we're looking at Twitch post gambling ban and asking, how did it somehow get worse? All right, guys, so before I get into the video, I wanted to reiterate that if you or someone that you know is struggling with problem gambling, there are resources available to you near where you live. You could follow the link in the description to visit the National Council on Problem Gambling and find out more. All right, guys, before we get into the meat of the story, I'm going to quickly summarize our previous video on Twitch gambling. So if you haven't seen that, you can feel free to check it out if you want the full story, but I'll make it quick. Essentially, Twitch announced their intention to ban unregulated crypto casinos in late September with the full rules arriving on October 18th. And when we saw them, it was basically what they had already announced. It took two years and incredible pressure from some of the platform's biggest and most well-respected creators, but it did finally happen. To be clear, gambling as a whole was not banned. It was just these specific varieties of gambling on unregulated crypto casinos. I still think it's a win because it forced this discussion to actually happen, but it's not a perfect solution, not even close. But now we've had the full rules and Twitch's implementation of them for about a week, and the situation is not good. Before we get into the details though, I just want to put things in perspective for you. Trainwrecks TV, who is one of the biggest gambling streamers on Twitch pre-ban, told viewers that he made $360 million gambling on Twitch. I'm not just saying this because that number is insane, although it definitely is, but to put in perspective that the casinos sponsoring Train believed them to be worth more than that amount in terms of what it would bring in. Remember, they ran the numbers and these casinos decided that it was worth it to spend $360 million total on one streamer. Amazon spent $460 million on Rings of Power, so, you know, you cut out some of the CGI trolls, maybe Train plays Elrond pro bono, and Train can probably bankroll season three. That's the kind of money that we're talking about here. Now that we're in the right headspace in terms of the money and power being thrown around in this situation, let's look at Twitch's rules and their actual implementation on the site. Obviously, if you look at the slots category on Twitch right now, you will not see Train or XQC playing Hand of Midas. But what's there now is arguably worse. Now, I haven't been staring at the directory all week. I've just been popping in periodically, especially on Monday when we had our meeting for this show and the situation is completely f***ed up. On Monday, I saw four channels, all streaming the same online casino with the same weird names, and all hovering around 500 viewers at the top of the slots category. Very little chatting, lots of weird names. Yeah, this is clearly view botting. It doesn't take a genius to see that, but I guess it's cheaper than paying Train twice the budget of Doctor Strange 2 or something. I also saw straight up scams, like this rebroadcast of a Drake stake stream with a phishing link in it. Hilariously, this 5,000 viewer stream, again, probably view bots to some extent, wouldn't be allowed under the new rules, even if it actually was Drake. But it stayed up on the site for almost all of Tuesday, all without a single message being typed in the chat, because you had to be a follower for three months in order to chat. I wonder why they do that. It's also extremely hard to tell if a streamer should actually be streaming the casino site that they're on. Some are trying to put the fact that the casino is regulated in their stream title, but it's very Wild West. Others are playing exactly the same slot games that, you know, the big streamers were playing before the ban, but they're making it unclear on their stream exactly which site they're using to play those games. This should be disqualifying, right? Like, if you can't show that you're on a permitted site, then you shouldn't be permitted to stream. It kind of makes perfect sense, right? 
Unfortunately, I haven't seen much action from Twitch on this, and I'm pretty sure if you go to the Sloss directory the moment you watch this video, you're gonna see a lot of sort of gray areas and obfuscation. And some streamers have actually argued the opposite. If viewers can't tell which site is being gambled on from the stream alone, then it should be okay. Like, this is total chaos. Finally, some of the streams in the slots category are just placeholder streams whose only purpose is to direct the viewer to a different streaming site where the streamer is gambling on those unregulated sites that aren't allowed on Twitch anymore. And this is where shit gets pretty bad. Now, YouTube notably has a policy against this. You can't make things whose only goal is to get the viewer to go somewhere else. You know, like a video that says, hey, what's up guys, I'm live on Twitch right now, and maybe you delete it afterwards or something. That's not okay on YouTube. Twitch's rules for something like that aren't as clear. I looked through the TOS and couldn't find anything explicit, though I will say, I'm sure there are plenty of rules that could be bent, twisted, or interpreted in such a way as to ban those people if they really wanted to. But again, as far as I can tell, that's not happening. I did reach out to Twitch about all of the above, but didn't hear back in time for the publication of this video. But these placeholder streams sending viewers to other streaming sites often feature a site that you might not be familiar with, and that site is called DLive. If you know what DLive is, it's probably because you have some previous interest in online political discussion, or perhaps you saw this tweet. That's right, DLive is actively recruiting any streamers who might want to continue gambling on those same sites that have been banned by Twitch. And I would have missed this tweet if not for Andrew Amos of Deserto and his excellent piece about it, so kudos. But DLive isn't a place that we should want Twitch viewers to flock to, especially kids. The site is basically the number one place to go to if you've been banned from all the other major platforms due to their more permissive moderation strategies, which seem to just boil down to don't do illegal shit. DLive says that they designate certain sensitive streams as X content, whatever that means, but while I made a new account and while I was researching this story, that was turned on by default. I didn't opt into it, it was already on. DLive's number one earner for a while was self-identified white nationalist Nick Fuentes. And the site played host to multiple streams from the January 6th attack on the US Capitol. So if you go there right now, I guarantee you, you're going to see and hear some pretty wild shit. I knew about this site because it was the site that Alex Jones famously fled to, and that incredibly was actually banned from, which is pretty rare for DLive. There aren't a lot of people getting banned from this site as far as I can tell. That's kind of the selling point of the whole thing. And yeah, Fuentes also was eventually banned from the site. So I popped in for the past few days at random intervals to just try and get a feel for what the landscape is on this dark reflection of Twitch, I guess. And uh, what I saw was pretty f***ed up. By far the most popular thing on the website is slots. Nobody is going to DLive to watch enthralling Overwatch 2 gameplay a fact that this streamer humorously noted in his stream. And obviously the slots category on DLive has all the potential for abuse and exploitation that the Twitch slots category had, and I suppose in a way still has. It's just that at DLive, it seems like nobody really pretends to care very much about that. And that's kind of the vibe of DLive as far as I can tell. Just don't do anything that will provoke an FBI open up kind of reaction. The second most popular kind of content on DLive are news and talk shows, and who boy. And you call the phones, and you aim the antenna at a certain distance. They had to, they, they practiced this, and they got it right. They, they put the, uh, the phones around this popcorn, and they, they popped the popcorn using their cell phones. Mm -hmm. That tells you what that. it's doing yeah. to you, okay? So get your cell phone away from you. Um, and then mitigate your house when we and he warned us when you first put this stuff in your house you might detox day three we both got kind of run down and had diarrhea yeah i just randomly tuned into someone peddling a 2008 hoax about cell phones popping popcorn kernels and i you're all very intelligent so i know you know that if your cell phone could do that it would do pretty bad things to the water inside your body too
like really bad things. So yeah, these categories seem to just be filled with people regurgitating conspiracy theories about QAnon, COVID-19, electromagnetic radiation, and plots by some unknown actors to install billionaire Rishi Sunak as the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. It's like a snack mix of weird shit. There's something for everyone. You like pretzels? You got pretzels. You like the little crunchy cheesies? There's plenty of that too. Basically, besides gambling, DLive is where you go to get a heaping helping of grade A bullshit. Like sure, I know there are people just vibing on the platform. I did see a guy streaming Overwatch too who seemed pretty chill. But for the most part, it's either gambling or news. And now they're seemingly growing in popularity by how much exactly it's hard to say while courting this audience of former Twitch viewers. They're not the only ones, and I'll get to that in a moment, but first I just want to say that Twitch absolutely owns some responsibility for part of this situation at least. They let gambling explode on their platform, they profited from it, maybe directly, but certainly indirectly in terms of subscriptions and things like that, and they only acted when they were pushed to do so by some of their platform's biggest creators. Not only that, but so far it really doesn't seem like Twitch is very interested in enforcing those October 18th rules or even creating some kind of standard that would allow those rules to be enforced in a way that makes sense for the platform. It feels a bit like these October 18th rules were supposed to be the end of the discussion for some reason. Like, it's just enough action to placate the angry viewers and streamers, but not enough actual results to do anything except stop the biggest streamers from streaming these things. What other conclusion am I supposed to arrive at based on what we've seen from Twitch? Okay, back to the other platforms that are trying to pick up some of these Twitch users. There will be people, periodically I'm sure, who are banned from the Twitch platform, and Twitch will of course refine its approach to content, banning certain kinds of content in the future. When that happens, there will be fans of those people or types of content that want to keep watching. They just want to keep consuming that content. So if there's an option, they may follow that streamer or content to another platform. It's an increasingly well-documented phenomenon and new challengers are lining up. One of those is Rumble, a site now known mostly for political content and mostly from a particular end of the political spectrum. It's sort of like the DLive situation, except they have Peter Thiel money and they're trying to sue YouTube for $2 billion. Good luck on that one. But they're also hosting figures like, of course, Andrew Tate, who was recently banned from basically every major platform, and did an interview with Steve Will Do It of the Full Send crew on the Rumble platform. This is another great example of somebody who's been banned from Twitch and many other major platforms trying to retain that audience on a new platform. But maybe you don't want all that baggage of an existing platform and you want to start fresh somewhere else. Well, Trainwreck announced that he's building his own and that he wants it to benefit small and mid-sized creators. He's also teased a feature that he says will change the game. Normally I'd be like, yeah, sure, okay, whatever. That's that's what Microsoft said, right? Microsoft said that with Mixer. But in this case, Train does have that mogul money and I've got to admit, I find it hard to underestimate him. One last thing about Train though, and this is kind of relevant to the new platform discussion, he said he's not done gambling on stream. Although, he obviously won't be doing it on Twitch. Instead, he hired a developer to help him build a standalone website where he can stream those Twitch-prohibited activities. Again, if you're at all familiar with online politics, you've probably seen something like this before. The most common example would probably be Destiny site Destiny.gg. If you have a big enough and vocal enough fan base, they will follow you to your own personal platform, and notably, I mentioned that Nick Fuentes was banned from DLive, he eventually did the same thing, building his own platform. So it's clearly an option that could work for some people. It's another potential minefield for Twitch to navigate, and I don't think the right play is to throw up your hands and say, well, we're the biggest streaming platform in the world, we're not worried. I'm sure their competitors, even though DLive and Rumble are very unlikely to take over the video streaming world, 
would like nothing more than to be underestimated at this point. Because right now, Twitch's handling of gambling on their website just isn't cutting it. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring the notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit us up on our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.